the moon is said to represent the emotions, emotional self, and its cycles affects the ups and downs of our moods and feelings. Poets like to write about moon. I would like uh, Hitomi to read out these two haiku poems on moon written by Basho. Kumo ori, I'm sorry. A kumo ori ori, hito yasumeru, tsuki mikana. Kumo ori ori, hito yasumeru, tsuki mikana. Yasu yasu to, idete izayou, tsuki no kumo. Yasu yasu to, idete izayou, tsuki no kumo. Thank you. Now you can take your seat and enjoy the rest of the presentation. Oh, the moon gazing where some clouds from time to time repose the eye. It means even as pretty as the moon, it's best to appreciate it occasionally, not constantly, just occasionally. From the moon, to drinking under the moonlight. Basho writes, three in one cup, but I drink to one name. Who am I this night? Basho being descended from a Samuri family could want to, would want to honor the originator of the samurai coat with three cups of ceremonial wine. Some people said Basho also had in mind the 8th century Chinese poet Li Bai when he wrote, and when he wrote his three in one haiku. Li Bai is known for often getting very drunk. <laughs> the haiku is the response to Li Bai's well-known poem, Under the Moon, Drinking Alone. The poem, you know, is been uh, translated in to English uh, in many different versions. This one it reads, in the midst of the flowers, with one jar of wine, drinking alone and no one else. I offer up my cup to the bright moon, my shadow and I are party of three. In Chinese he said, Fa gan yat wu zhao, du zhe mo sang chan, you know, that's the Chinese way to read this poem. Born near Kyoto, Basho make about 1,000 haiku poems throughout his lifetime while traveling around Japan. He missed Kyoto, and he wrote, even in Kyoto, hearing the cuckoo's cry, I long for Kyoto. This is a poem about memories and nostalgia, and probably more importantly, it tells us that the origin of suffering is attachment. Among Brasho's haiku poems, this one is the easiest to understand. First day of spring, I keep thinking about the end of autumn. You can write it. We don't need weaving support or adding support. You know, this one is, you know, straightforward and easy. But just within these few words, you know, you can, I, I hope you could appreciate the meaning behind. Shuk, uh, Shiki, Shiki is in a, one of the Greek four, is regarded as the major figure in the development of modern haiku poetry credited with writing nearly 20,000 stanzas during his short lifespan of 35 years. He only lived for 35 years. I like so much to match this beautiful picture taken by my friend Andy. Andy is here. Yeah, I like this picture very much because I think it matched 100% with the haiku here. A summer, a, a summer shower, the rain beats on the heads of the carp. 
After killing a spider, how lonely I'm feeling the cold of night. After killing a spider, the haku writer doesn't improve his situation, whatever. Instead, he's left even lonelier than he was. The lesson has a great deal to share. The poem suggests it doesn't mean the spider is without value. By killing the spider, the writer removes the one companion he had in his loneliness. This picture of spider web was taken in my garage. <laughs> Standing under this pine tree, I'm a drop of dew. This haiku was written by a shiki student, Kyoshi, who aspired an objective and realistic poetry and followed the traditional haiku expressing nature as it is. Haiku, in fact, focuses a lot on nature. Ize is the pen name that literally means one cup. In Chinese, it's called yatcha. Yeah, the tea we are drinking, yeah. Ize used dialects and spoken works of haiku, maybe because he was born in a farmer's family and loved to use plain and simple words. Ize has some bitter experience. He wandered through Japan and fought over his, his inheritance with his stepmother. His first, his first child died shortly after his birth, and his daughter passed away less than two and a half years later. Inspired by Issa to write this haiku, this, this, this dewdrop wall is the dewdrop wall. And yet, and yet, I hope you would appreciate or understand the deep feeling behind the, uh, this haiku. Issa wrote many haiku poems on dragonflies. I know what he said here, flying two feet and landing. That was what the dragonfly in this picture did. In fact, I got some emotional attachment with this picture. I took this picture on a boat trip after visiting the ovens in China's remote Sichuan province. When we are leaving, the kids from the E minority village cried. They want us to stay. They did not want us to leave. It happened that this dragonfly came to my boat, behaving like saying goodbye to me. So, after reading this haiku by Issa, I wrote my own haiku. I said, yellow, yellow dragonfly, returning over and over, clinging and lingering, the boat doesn't stop because I have to go. This is the pic uh, picture weary of a one-ton temple bell. I took this photo in a temple near China's West Lake in Hangzhou. I couldn't find a huge moon moth then. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no moon moth. Imagine sitting still waiting for the bell to toll. So this haiku leads me to think, uh, think of, you know, the book I've read, For Home the Bell Tolls. Fame is a bee. It has a song. It has a stain. Ah, too. It has a wing. This haiku poem is not too hard to understand. Dickinson first visualized fame as a bee. In the second line, she means that the buzzing sound of the flowers is always there around a popular figure. Finally, she says that the fame has sustained. Fame stains the soul of a person. Fame is not constant. It's not a bee. It never stays permanently in a person's life. I think many of the people here might have the feeling, you know, 
Yeah, every, everyone knows you, and you are, you know, somebody in the community. But imagine, fame is a sting. Purple flower bloom, raindrops fall into sunshine, spirits fade away. This one was written by contemporary haiku poet and easier to understand. So I want to introduce you some of the contemporary haiku so that you can draw a comparison between those written by the masters and uh, people among us. While talking about flowers, I picked this haiku on lotus. Blooming over mud, lotus speak life's positive, grown out of the past. This is uh, written by, this one was written by an American writer. Its meaning is very close to the well-known Chinese Song Dynasty, Song Dynasty poem on Lotus. It says, Lotus emerge, merges unstained from the filth. Uh, in, in Chinese, we all say that Lin chut yu lai yi bat yin, zok ching lin yi bat yu, zhong tong ngoi zik. That's what the way Chinese described uh, lotus. Also, when talk about the Chinese poetry, the Yun Dynasty poem is very much close to haiku. For, for example, this one, with the wind, old tree, cross at dusk, tiny bridge, floating brook, and cottages, all in very short works, ancient row, Brick wind, bony steed, the sun singing west, and one with broken heart farther away from home. I like this picture of China's Great Wall. This is a contemporary haiku. Great Wall of China stretching thousands of long miles, timeless, fraudless walls. But I, after reading this one, I'm thinking I want to change the last word here to make it read. Timeless fortress falls. Nothing can last forever. Even the greatest fortress will fall. This one was written by Billy Collins, who is described as the one of the best formal haiku poets uh, in America. I took this picture in a farm in Portugal during a beautiful summer day, showing two dragon-like clouds fighting against each other. I think the picture fits this haiku well. In the summer sky, a cloud with its mouth open is a smaller cloud. Collins is called formal, formal haiku poets because he promotes expressing yourself, deepest, expressing your deepest self in 17 syllables. She found the lover. Who could take her breath? Take, who could take her breath away? A summer river. She found, she found the lover. Who could take her breath away? A summer river. This haiku by Kak Strain is a sad one. When the poet was crossing a bridge over the Hudson River, he remembered a local news story from a few weeks earlier about a woman who had drowned herself just down river. This is a picture of a river that I took last summer. It looked like a Chinese brush painting. I like this picture very much, it's abstract. I would like to conclude my presentation with a happy note from Paul Sebastian. Birds cheerfully welcome, flowers cheery smiles at the sun, Greeting starts the day's run. Thank you, everyone of you, and have a good day. I hope you would enjoy this presentation. Thank you.